Hi guys and welcome back to part 2 of Photoshop Layers. Okay, so let's go over and create a text layer. First of all, I'm going to go over to my tool panel here and select the text tool from the side. Now I've selected it and I can now go over to my image and drag a selection into my image here. Convert that and once I've selected that you will directly set, see that we get a text layer over here at the top. Now I'm able to write in this box, so I'm going to just going to write here Photoshop and also make this just maybe a white foreground color and also maybe just a little bit bigger. Okay, accept that here from the top and we have now selected a new text layer. I'm also able again with the move tool moving this around here and as you guys can see over here we have the text layer on its own again. So almost like working like a separate empty layer I'm now able again to take the opacity and just change this a little bit down, take tweak it down a little bit or if I even want to change my blending options to any option that I want here. I'm going to change it to soft light and as you guys can see now it's really softly applied to my image over here. Let me change my opacity up a little bit to say 100%. Then I can also work with my fill over here just so that you can see again it has been applied just a little bit to the layers underneath of it. Then again blending it in or out over here and it's again on the top. So if I move this I'm also able just to move that onto the basic layer turn off our basic layer of smart objects. Again, as you guys can see, normal text layer works almost like a separate empty layer. I can also move that back to the top. And now I'm also able with a text layer that also applies to all the other different layers. I'm able to double click on here and we will be brought into the layer styles. So this is a really nice option to work with layer styles if you're working with text layers. I'm just quickly going to hit cancel here, I'm going to take our opacity all the way up to the top and also change our blending options back to normal. Okay, so now we have it on top here, set to normal, double click again onto our layers panel and we will directly be brought into the layer styles. So now in layer styles I'm actually able to go over here and work with some options. What I really like to work with is the stroke option. If I'm going to select the stroke option, this basically means that we're going to get a stroke effect around our text. So over here I'm also able now to change our black foreground color say to a red color. So basically this means we're going to have a red stroke. At the moment the size is also quite big. So over here I'm also able now to change the size a little bit down to say just six pixels over here. I'm also able to change my position, blending options and opacity again. But more of that in some future tutorials. Let's go all the way down to say drop shadow. I want to add a little bit of a drop shadow. First of all, I've selected it now, but I need to select drop shadow as well to get into that option down here. Okay, so let's change our drop shadow a little bit. We're gonna tweak up the size a little bit. So over here you can see now this behind we have a little um, drop shadow. If I change my distance here you can also see that that will be applied as well. Let me just tweak that a little bit more to the center here. Okay and the size a little bit down again. There we have it with a spread you can see that a little bit better. Okay so with spread it directly applies just to the back and we can now change our size, distance and so on and tweak that a little bit. Again also our opacity at the top you can again change blending options, you again can change the color and also the angle. So again you've got a few more options to work with this but more of that in some future tutorials. Okay so let's accept that, say okay and directly you can also see that those effects here from our layer styles will be underneath and you can also now able to actually turn them on or off. So over here really quickly I can say drop shadow that should not be applied and I won't see that in my final image now. Also the stroke if I don't want to have that or no effects at all. So you can either turn off the effects individually or all effects at once. Okay over here again a small triangle just to hide these effects again so you have more space in your layers panel. Say for instance if you have over 100 layers this comes in really handy to turn these small triangles off so you have more space or again create some groups with these layers. Okay so let's go on to the next layer which is a shape layer. Okay, so first of all what I'm going to do is go all the way over here to the shape tool, select that and we'll directly get into the shape tools again. 
So now I'm able to as well go over here and just drag a box and we have now a shaped box over here. If you want to under the shape tool you can also say a path or pixels. I'm going to select the shape here. If we go into the shape tool as well you have the option to do rectangular tool, rounded rectangular, lips, polygon and so on. You have more shapes in here. Also custom shapes. I would like to work just with the rectangular tool at the moment. Okay, on the right hand side over here we have it renamed to rectangular. I'm going to say here shape tool. So we just know or shape layer, that is our shape layer. Okay, then again you have again the option to change your blending options, say to overlay, lighten, screen, whatever you want to. I'm going to change it to overlay at the moment. And also I'm able to change my opacity over here and also my fill over here. So if I take all of that down a little bit, you can again see that this shape layer will do this kind of effect to my original image here. Let me just go over to our move tool and I'm now also able to move this shape in a new position on my image. As you guys can also see we do get a new effect to our image but mostly I don't really do shapes to get certain effects. I would rather add shapes to do background say behind the text here. So over shape again I would change that to normal 100% opacity and also fill again 100 opacity. So it's on top of our text layer now and we basically wanted to have that behind our text layer. So we would simply take this and drag that underneath of our Photoshop layer here. So it's directly underneath of our text layer. Now as you guys can see also the Photoshop is quite big or the shape layer is too small. I want to maybe make this a little bit bigger. Very simple. I can just press Command T again and then I will directly be brought into the shape layer uh, dimensions here and I can just make the shape a little bit bigger. Accept that again from the top and that is a bit bigger. At the moment you can also see we've got this white border. This is basically still because we have the shape layer selected. So if I want to select Photoshop over here you will see the white border has disappeared and we now are working on a different layer again. So very simple shape layer again. I can also double click on here, go be brought into the layer styles and again do loads of different effects to our shapes. Say for instance a nice effect down here, gradient overlay. If I select the gradient overlay we can now create a gradient overlay. Over here in the options again, again changing the blending options. You can also take the opacity down a little bit or if you want to change the angle or the style and the scale. So loads of different options here again. Okay, select OK and we're going to keep it to that for the moment. As well as you guys can see over here again we have the layer style effect underneath of it. If you want to turn the effects off, you don't have any effects, turn that on and you have the gradient overlay on its own. You can also turn these off as well. Okay, let's minimize this, more space in our layer options up here and we're going to go back to Photoshop to our text layer. Now the next layer will be a adjustment layer. First of all before I start with the adjustment layers I want to basically take my basic layer move that all the way to the top so we're starting in a way fresh. Now what I mostly do with adjustment layers I want to get certain effects to my images or to my layer then I would work with a adjustment layer. So first of all you have three ways to get really quickly to your adjustment layers. Let me just turn our layers here a little bit to the side and make some space here. First of all you can use the adjustment layer icon down here. You can either then also go to the adjustment panel over here. If you select adjustments you have a few options to work with these different adjustments over here which are exactly the same like these down here. Or you can go back to the top to image and you can go to adjustments and again apply these adjustments. But now there are a few separate things about these adjustments. These adjustments will be directly be applied again to your basic layer so you won't have a separate adjustment layer and these adjustment layers over here will basically create a separate adjustment layer. So let me show that quickly to you. If I just go to adjustment layers here and go to levels, select that, you will be directly be brought into the properties of that layer but also you will have a separate layer here at the top so we are again able to turn it off, change blending options, opacity, fill, etc, etc and also layer styles. So these can be applied directly to the basic layer but if we now go to back to our basic layer and say for instance go under image, adjustments and we go into levels and now we will be brought into a window. We will now first of all able to change our levels, say OK and that will be directly be applied to our basic layer. So if you are really photoshopping a lot, 
this technique is not the nicest and the best to do I would mostly go to these adjustments over here and create separate adjustment layers then rather applying the adjustment directly to the basic layer okay so let's go quickly in our history panel just back to layers and we just have our image again and we have our normal adjustment layer over here so first of all again if I select the adjustment layer and make this just a little bit bigger our properties panel over here we are now also able to change our properties here a bit and also just brighten this darken our blacks a little bit maybe push the whites a little bit for the highlights and you'll directly see we have this new effect on here so now again I'm able to turn the adjustment layer on or off to have that effect applied or if I want to go to my blending options turn that to overlay so we get a completely different effect if I want to now also go to opacity here at the top and I can then again tweak the opacity to just have a little bit contrastier image that I would create just with a normal simple adjustment layer okay so now also if you're working with the adjustment layer this adjustment layer will be directly be applied to everything that is underneath of it so there's also a way around this if you want to just have a certain adjustment layer just to be applied to this basic layer there is a way of doing that simply hold alt going between the layers you will see the small arrow appearing once you select that the small arrow here in the front is appearing and that basically means that only this adjustment layers will only be applied to our basic layer so it will not affect our Photoshop shape basic layer or empty layer again it will just affect our basic layer over here okay so let's quickly create another adjustment layer from down here adjustment layer I'm gonna go to hue and saturation select a hue and saturation on the right hand side again a properties panel to change that again so first of all I want to change just the saturation all the way down and as you guys can see again the effect will be applied to all my layers if I'm going to turn off the layers adjustment layer then also the basic layer Photoshop layer and shape layer and if I'm going to turn on the basic smart object you will see that this hue and saturation will only be applied again to the basic layer but it's still affecting all my other layers they just turned off at the moment so I want to just change my hue and saturation to be applied to the basic layer very simple again holding alt and I'm going to now select see at the moment it changed again this basically means now this hue and saturation layer is applied to the levels layer and a layer to the basic layer so let me turn on all the other layers over here and now we can turn off these two layers and you'll see that the basic layer has been adjusted again with a one new levels adjustment layer and also a hue saturation layer so this effect comes out Again, I have the ability to just change my blending options and also opacity or fill or go into the layer styles and create gradients and more effects. Okay, so let's go over to our next layer, which is basically a basic layer with a mask. Okay, selecting the basic layer again, and I'm going to move that all the way down to the new layer icon down here. Drop that and quickly going to go move that to the top so we are fresh from the start again going to turn off everything or maybe let's turn on our adjustment layers over here with our basic layer so we still have this effect right okay back to our basic layer I'm just gonna write basic layer plus mask okay so I have a mask now on here and first of all I'm now able to work with my mask option here from the side or if I want to go all the way down and use the mask option from here I'm more a fan of working with this mask option from down here so first of all what I'm going to do is select this mask option directly you will see that we have now a white mask applied to this basically on a white mask this means we can now see everything in our image if we're going to invert this la mask layer over here so we're basically converting it to a black hidden mask via command E you'll directly see that it will be hidden and we will now see our effects that are underneath of it and now from our hidden mask we are actually able to paint back certain effects from our normal layer first of all just bear in mind you have to select your mask over here if you select your normal layer you can't really work with that you're going to paint directly on your image we want to work on the mask so over here I can now go back to my foreground colors with a white foreground color always think about that black mask a white foreground color white mask black foreground color okay over here 100 opacity and say for instance I want to just paint back the background so I can really easily do that when I'm painting over here you can see that the background will be more saturated again and comes back again a little bit can't really see the effect that heavy so let's just also do it on the clothing here as well okay so over here you can now see we also have 
this small black dot in here which basically means on our mask we have painted that back. If I turn this on and off you will directly see the effect and now you're basically able with mask to paint and hide certain things that you want to show. It sounds a little bit complicated but in most techniques I use these masks. So again with that mask you are now able also to change your opacity here from the top. Again the blending options fill and also if you press double click get into the layer styles again. So in my tutorials you will see me that I'm working a lot with these masks because I'm able to hide and show certain things that I want to do. Again if you want to you can also now again apply another adjustment layer or a new text layer and also so just clip that layer to this mask. Okay, but more of that in the next tutorial where I'm just going to show you guys a little bit how to work with all of these layers and masks now. Okay, so that was basically my quick tutorial on showing you guys the different layers. I'll show you guys in the next tutorial how I am working with these different layers and also just talk a little bit more about layers. Thank you guys for watching. If you still have any questions, please feel free to email me to team at manyphotography.co.za to help you with your questions. Thank you guys and see you all next week in another quick tutorial. Bye-bye.